Do you find yourself feeling overwhelmed? Like there's just too much, too many choices, too many things you have to do, too many things that might happen, too many things to do which you don't know exactly where to start. If all that is adding to your sense of overwhelm, if you're just feeling drained because there's just too much going on, then this video is the right video for you. Hello, I'm Steven Berg with ChristianFatigueSolutions.com. Today, I'm going to share with you a three-part cycle that will help you break that sense of overwhelm, increase your confidence, and boost your energy. One word of caution, however, even though there's only three steps to it, and it's fairly simple, it doesn't necessarily mean easy. If you're looking for something quick and easy to fix your sense of overwhelm, try one of the other videos over there, or over there, or over there. On the other hand, if you've discovered that quick and easy doesn't always really work, then stick around because this is about getting real world results. Unfortunately, it also requires real world effort. But if you're willing to put in the effort, you can look forward to the results. To get started, here are the three major steps. First, we gotta build that mental calming tools. Uh, you'll want two to three at least, although I will share uh, four with you today. <clears throat> then you're going to want to recognize when and on what things you're going to use those tools on to um, reduce that sense of overwhelm and anxiety and give yourself a greater sense of calm, confidence. And finally, it's all about, step number three, is all about integrating it into your daily lifestyle, making it a part of who you are, basically turning... Um, knowing when to use those tools and using them into an automatic habit so it just becomes a part of the new you. And that is where the magic happens. That's where you end up feeling a very different experience in your life, where on an ongoing basis you have a, a greater sense of calm, a greater sense of confidence, and of course without all the overwhelm draining your energy, you also have a greater ongoing um, level of energy. So let's get started. I'm going to share with you an overview of four mind calming tools that you could use. Number one, use your faith. By that I mean do a spiritual reality check. When you're feeling overwhelmed, when it feels like there's just too many things to do, when it feels like there's too many things that could go wrong, when it feels like it's out of control, give yourself a spiritual reality check. Check those feelings against what we know from God's word. Remember a Bible verse. Maybe it's a, a promise, something like, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Or all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. And maybe saying a prayer. I would highly recommend if you choose prayer to say something along the lines of, Dear God, I don't know what's going on. I don't know where to start. I don't even know where to begin. There's just so many things going on. I can't handle it all. But I know that none of those things are a surprise to you. None of those things are overwhelming to you. So I ask that you give me your peace and your confidence and your wisdom as to know what the next step is. My guess is if you just share that openly and honestly with him, you're going to have a greater sense of calm just from that one thing. But of course, you can also review uh, Bible stories, uh, characters in the Bible who were deep, uh, committed Christians, dedicated to God, and they went through times where it seemed like God wasn't around. They were overwhelmed by all kinds of things that were happening with them. Um, and they had those feelings. David in the Psalms repeatedly points out that there were times he felt like God had just abandoned him. And he realized as you go through each of these Psalms that in reality that hadn't happened. It was his feeling, but it wasn't the way that it actually was. But number two, on this list of calming tools, try what I call um, deep calming focus, or it might be referred to as mindfulness meditation. The reason I'm not crazy about the term meditation is because the, the, term, uh, the method that I recommend has nothing to do with spirituality whatsoever. It is simply a way to focus your thoughts and your attention 
on your body, the physical sensations in your body. So it focuses you on the here and now and allows your brain to let go of all those what ifs, I have to do this, there's so many things going on and all that stuff that's spinning around in your head and creating the overwhelm. It's literally as simple as just focusing on the feelings in your body. Now, of course, the most common one is focusing on your breath. Most people close their eyes, it's not a requirement, but it could be something as simple as just closing your eyes and feeling your breath. Coming in and going out. Now, a very common uh, recommendation is to slow down your exhale. So you're breathing out much slower than when you're breathing in. Now, I don't know uh, what the reason is, but for myself personally, I find that actually kind of agitates me and raises my anxiety. So what I do is I breathe in and then I just let go. And however fast it comes out, it comes out. But when I do that on a repeated basis, it's very relaxing. Now, of course, you don't have to focus just on your breath. You can focus on anything that you're, that you're in contact with or that you have a body sensation of. If you're sitting in a chair, you could feel your arms on the armrests of the chair, your butt on the bottom of the seat, your feet on the floor. Any of those things that help you focus on those sensations will bring you present into the felt sense of your body. And that's the basic goal. And number two, uh, number two is something that I learned for myself and I use it almost on a daily basis. It's tapping acupressure points. Now this isn't to be confused with emotional freedom techniques because what I'm sharing with you right now is a very simplified version of it. Um, it's not, it would not be considered EFT. You're just tapping on these acupressure points, top of the head, corner of the eyebrow, corner of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, chin point where the chin and the lip join together, collarbone, it's actually just under your collarbone, just above your um, rib, and then under your arm. For men, it's going to be in line with your nipples. For women, it'll be on um, your bra strap. Now, of course, you can use both sides of your face for obvious reasons. I only use one. <laughs> but if you just tap those points while you, so while you focus on whatever body sensations you have going on, you might even feel a sense of anxiety or uh, um, tension rising in your body. Let it happen. Don't try and change it. The secret is to just pay attention to it but don't try and control it. Just allow it to be what it is. You can focus on just the feeling of the actual tapping on your body. That's another aspect of it that you can use. And now there's a final one that I would like to suggest. And this is a little strange. It's something that I kind of came up with on my own. I discovered it by um, thinking about something I, I read about. And it's basically about tuning in to the rhythmic movement of your body. Now what I do this, I'm usually walking, and of course I have to pick a place that's fairly smooth, um, usually blacktop or concrete or something that's, even if it's dirt, fairly level, because most of the time I'm walking with my eyes closed, and I kind of peek out a little bit to make sure I'm not gonna hit anything or stumble on something. And then I'm literally relaxing my body as much as I possibly can while I'm walking and feeling the rhythm of my footsteps, the rhythm of my legs moving back and forth the rhythm of my arms sort of swinging as I'm walking. The idea is to basically become fully aware of that rhythmic movement in your body so that you're part of the rhythm. It's almost like following a drum beat. Dum, 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 dum. Whatever, you don't have to count, you don't have to say anything in your brain. Just feel that rhythm over and over and over again. What has happened for me, and what you will probably discover for yourself, is it's much easier to let go of everything else that's going on around you, and you just literally feel your body moving in a very rhythmic fashion. You could probably use it if you're on a stationary bike. I wouldn't recommend it on a regular bicycle on the street, of course. Probably run into something. Um, you could do it uh, maybe even just tapping your arm, or I don't know what other options there would be, but the idea is to focus on that feeling of rhythmic movement in your body. And that again will bring your focus back to your present state, a present sense of your body, how your body feels, and allow your mind to let go of all the crazy thoughts going through your head. So that's it for an overview of four mind calming tools that you can learn. So the idea is to pick 
uh, one to two, maybe three of those tools. You might want to try all four to see which ones seem to work better. But when you pick two or three that work really well for you, use them, practice them over and over again until you get a really, uh, you're really confident in how you're using it. And the idea is to practice them, maybe set aside 10 or 15 minutes every day and practice them every single day for a minimum amount of time. That's where you're kind of getting to know the technique itself. That's where you're building this tool that you're going to later use um, in a broader sense. And that's when we start getting to step two of this cycle. In step two of this cycle, it's all about building your recognition as to when you should apply those mind calming tools and on what situations that you would most effectively use those mind calming tools. There are at least three categories of when and what types of things you can use them on that will be very helpful in reducing that sense of overwhelm, giving your sense of uh, increasing your sense of calm confidence and allowing your body to um, rebuild your energy that was being drained by all that sense of overwhelm. Number one is the big events. Now that's the kind of thing that everybody recognizes when they're stressed and overwhelmed. The times when something happens, your car broke down, uh, the babysitter you know, uh, wasn't available, and you somebody called out sick at work, and it happened all at the same time, and you're like, ah, it's crazy. You know it, you recognize it, you recognize you're overwhelmed. Perfect time to pick up one of your mind calming tools or maybe all two or three of them and use them in that moment to help yourself calm down. Say a prayer, uh, do some tapping, um, do some deep meditation or deep relaxation where you're focusing on your breath coming in and out. Or if you have the opportunity, do some rhythmic body movement, go for a walk, whatever it takes. But that's a great time to implement those tools and help bring your uh, immediate anxiety down to a much lower level. The second thing that's very helpful to use these tools on is basically adjusting your baseline level of anxiety or nervous system activation. You can think of it as sort of like a graph. Now what ends up happening is for people that have a significant amount of overwhelm or anxiety in their life, they can live that way on an ongoing basis and it becomes normal for them. In fact, if they grew up in a family or a home with a lot of anxiety, they may have been they may have felt normal to them their entire life. And so they're not really aware of the fact that they're having some ongoing tension, anxiety or feelings of overwhelm almost on a daily basis, almost on a constant basis. In this little graph, you could think of it as like the red line and, you know, the except for the big peak at the top, it feels normal. It's, it's just the way people normally are, it's the way I am, and I you might even feel, if I'm down here at the, the lower ends of, of that uh, red line, I might feel like I'm feeling calm and relaxed. But what will happen is, as you practice these um, mind calming tools, what you'll discover is that your body can go at a much deeper level of relaxation and calm, down to, let's say, the green line. And when you experience that, then all of a sudden you'll have something to compare your normal to, what feels normal, to that deeply calm state. And then you'll recognize, well, I may be just kind of anxious and uptight most of the time. And then when you recognize that and you start using those tools on a regular, consistent basis when those big events come up, and also uh, on a kind of a scheduled basis for 10 or 15 minutes every day, it'll tend to move your baseline down, for example, to that blue line. In that case, then, you literally have a, a, a buffer zone. Uh, you basically have a longer um, fuse, so to speak, before you get to the point of feeling overwhelmed. It lowers your overall baseline uh, nervous anxiety to a lower level, so you just live in a calmer state. That's when you start experiencing life in a different way. And things that are bigger, like that big mountain there at the top of the red line, that will actually be a lower level mountain. And eventually, you may even be able to uh, go through those kinds of circumstances without even getting a whole lot of anxiety or feelings of overwhelm. The third thing that would be really helpful for you to use your mind calming tools on is any repeated patterns that you might notice. Uh, one that happens a lot for people and is relatively e easy to notice is anticipatory anxiety. Let's say um, your work or at least certain days at work feels like it's very anxious. 
you have a boss that's picking everything apart of what you're doing, or maybe it's visiting a certain relative and you know every time you see them, you end up getting very anxious and overwhelmed and frustrated. When you notice those patterns, what you can do is you can actually um, do those mind calming tools in advance, especially with anticipatory anxiety. Do that in advance so it brings down that baseline while you're thinking about, oh, I'm gonna go visit Aunt Sally. I love Aunt Sally, but man, she just drives me crazy. While you're having that experience, do the deep relaxation breathing. Say some prayers. Try some tapping. Maybe even do some rhythmic body movement. Whatever it is, just use those tools to help yourself calm down so that you can stay calm. Even if you actually get to Aunt Sally's house and she starts, you know, doing whatever it is she does, you've started out at a lower baseline. So you're going to be less anxious and less uptight even if you end up having a not a great experience. For example, if you're going to work and you know on Wednesdays there's this boss that comes in and takes everything apart of what you're doing, Wednesday morning, spend some extra time doing some tapping, praying, whatever tools work for you to get yourself in as calm a state as possible before you walk into your office. And you might be surprised with that mindset in place, you may have a different experience or even if your boss comes in and still tears things apart, you may have a much lower level of uh, overwhelm doing that. Now on to step number three of this three-part cycle. Integrating those tools or using those tools into your day-to-day -day life. This is the place where the magic happens. This, where, this is where um, as you get them automated so they become automatic habits and you use them on a regular basis, almost without thinking about it, or maybe even without thinking about it, your overall sense of overwhelm can drop dramatically. Your sense of calmness and ability to handle things coming up will increase significantly. And with all that uh, anxiety and sense of overwhelm, that paralyzing uh, fear, in a sense, being taken away, your energy level should come up significantly. So what does integration look like? Well, integration basically is the stage at which you become automatic. It becomes like a habit to use these tools on a regular basis. I would recommend continuing to set aside a certain amount of time every day to practice them just so that they're top of mind when something comes up. They're like kind of immediately available to you. But you'll discover after a while, especially when you start taking time to recognize those different patterns in your life, the different times when anxiety starts coming up, when you when you recognize when you can anticipate it, you'll start doing these things on an automatic basis. And when they become automatic, it's just less stress, it's less effort. You're not spending a lot of time thinking about it, putting effort into it. You just sort of like an automatic program that kind of runs on its own. This is also where that baseline we talked about before can really be moved down significantly. So you just spend most of your time at a lower level of overwhelm, lower level of anxiety, and a greater sense of calm, a greater sense of confidence. And of course, with all the drains of all the anxiety be taken away, more than likely you also have an increase of ongoing uh, sense of energy. One of the great things about integrating this into your life, into your daily habits, is that it essentially um, starts taking away a lot of the anticipatory anxiety because you'll start recognizing and automatically doing things to bring down that level of um, nervous system activation. And by doing that, after a while, you, you end up preventing uh, having these feelings of overwhelm because as more things pop up, you're dealing with it from a space of feeling calm and confidence. Like, oh, well, yep, that wasn't what I was expecting at work today, but you know what? I've gotten through this before. And if I start feeling overwhelmed or if I start feeling just edging up just a little bit because that's when it's really effective, I can start tapping. I can, I can have a prayer. I can do some deep relaxation, focus on my breath, whatever it takes to bring that back down again. And then the next thing comes along in the day, you're, you're able to handle it because you never let it get that high throughout the whole day. So in the end, you, you end up integrating it. It becomes an automatic pattern in your life. 
especially when you start getting to the point where you're starting to reduce that level of overwhelm and you start just feeling it creeping up a little. It may not even be bad. It may not even be really uncomfortable, but you'll get more attuned to that sense in your body when you start feeling that overwhelm or having those thoughts about, oh, I don't know if I can handle this. Oh, there's just too much to do. Oh, that's a time for me to start tapping. That's a time for me to start focusing on my breath. Take five minutes, three minutes. Sometimes that's all it takes to calm yourself down. When you do that in an automatic way, just without thinking much about it, guess what? You arrive at a new normal. You arrive at a new you. And then you end up living with less overwhelm in general and more energy. And isn't that what you're looking for? If you like this video, you found it useful, be sure and click a like on it, share it with some friends who might be able to use it, and have a wonderful blessed day. Bye-bye.